Hi everyone, acrylic pouring is all the rage right now. And when I started pouring, I was looking at all these YouTube videos and I was getting so confused about all the different products I had to buy and things like that. So in this series, we are going to take a look first at all of the items that you're going to need and even compare some of the ones that, that they say, use this or use this. And then we're going to look at all the different types of pours. So I hope you'll come along and I look forward to this journey with you. All right. Hi, everyone. OK, so the reason that I'm doing this is because when I started pouring, pouring is so much fun but there was so much information out there so much incredible information that one one person who does pouring does uses this product and another one uses this product and i didn't know which one was going to be right for me so i just kind of bought everything and so i want to tell you the reason why the, certain people use certain things and and all of that and the difference between them and uh, what you need to get started, what you really don't need to get started. And so I'm excited about this one. This is really gonna be comprehensive. First thing, first, 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 is covering your table. You always need to cover your table. Uh, acrylic pouring is very, very fun, very, very messy. So you're gonna need to cover your table. Uh, I, with my art table, I don't care if paint gets on it, but I would care if this gets on it because there's an incredible amount of overpour from your paint. And so you're going to want to cover your table. I got this at Home Depot and it is just, it's used for in the painting, in the painting section. And I have used this several times and I still have an incredible amount left. Not very expensive, probably nine, $10 for this. It helps to cover your table. Some people use newspaper. I don't recommend it. Uh, other people use the wax paper. I also don't recommend that because then you're tearing off sheets and the sheets can move and things like that. So next, gloves. Wear gloves. And I got these at the grocery store. You can get them anywhere. But when I don't use gloves, I usually end up soaking my wedding ring in a nail polish remover because I get so much paint into my ring and I'm already a messy painter anyway, even when I'm just painting portraits or what have you, but oh, I get really, really messy. Next comes craft sticks. So I got these craft sticks at, uh, I believe I got these at the 99 cent store, but they're gonna be important to stir your paint. I like the bigger ones rather than the small thin ones that come in some popsicles, but that's my personal preference. You can eat a bunch of popsicles and, and just keep eating them. I, you can also reuse these. So don't worry about that. Now, cups. You're going to need some cups. I like to get three different sizes of cups. I got the little three ounce ones so that I can, if I have smaller things, a little small pour, like an eight by 10, and I don't want to use that much paint, use smaller cups. I've also got the medium size cups and the large cup. So it really depends on what I am doing and what I am working on, uh, the, which size cup I will use. And of course, your canvas. I am gonna be doing a whole video in this series of, of what types of things you can pour on. So it's not just canvas, you can do wood. And I did a little initials for my two granddaughters. And so, any kinds of things, rocks, all of that. We're going to discover those things. We're going to try some things together in a future video, give you lots of different options. But uh, with your canvas, I always recommend, of course, gessoing your canvas. I talked about this in one of my videos earlier about how important it is to gesso. And gesso is just a layering that you paint over. You can let it dry. It helps your paint run smoothly. And also it helps preserve the paint. I'm a big proponent of gesso. Next comes some painter's tape. I think it's vitally important that you do this because if it's, like I said, it's very messy. When you're tilting this paint, it's all running off your canvas. And if you don't want the sides 
to be covered. If you want to paint the sides and have control over that uh, a certain color, then you put your, your tape on. I like to put tape on the back where my sides can get a little messy, but I like to put on the back because I don't really like the runoff that happens on the back of my canvas. Love to use my tape. All right, so in order to keep your canvas up off your table, because you are going to need something to keep it up off your table, I would recommend either cups, just putting a few cups in each corner. I'm going to try to do this fast. Like this, like this, like this. And that way, it's up and it's off your table because you don't want it to sit and stick on your table because then once it dries, you're going to have to pry that thing off your table. So some people use push pins and they put one in each corner. I will post put a picture up here for you uh, of pit push pins in each corner to just keep it up off the table. And other people use the little uh, oven racks that you put under your roast. But the one thing that you have to keep, keep in mind with this, it has to be even. Otherwise, all of your paint, if it's uneven, it's all going to flow off to one side. So whatever you do, make sure that it's even on your canvas. Next, of course, the most important thing, your paints. You don't have to be picky about which ones to use. There's basics, and of course, there's the artist loft, and then the Liquitex. And then, of course, we have our craft paints. And I got all these from Michael's. But I, I like to use all of these. All of these work. Some of them are a little thicker, so I, have to, I don't have to use as much in the cups when I'm mixing. For example, my Liquitex Heavy Body, I don't have to use that much in my cups to get the color that I want. It's really going to be up to you. You're going to find that, that when you start to do it, you're going to say, oh, this paint is really thick. Next time, I'll use less of that one. I love all these colors, and so you can choose and pick and choose what you like. Metallics, though, super fun to use. Super fun to use metallics. And uh, you just pour them in there, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. All right, moving on to the supplies that you're going to need. Uh, I'm going to skip over here to the pouring mediums because I was hearing lots of different things about Oh, this pouring medium, I'm using this, I'm using that, I'm using this. And I was so confused. I finally found a pouring medium, Liquitex pouring medium, over at Michael's. And I started using that. Now, it wasn't cheap over there, but what I kept hearing was Floetrol, Floetrol. And I didn't know if I was doing something wrong, if there was something I wasn't including. It turns out that Liquitex and Floetrol are the same things as far as uh, pouring mediums are concerned. But I got these a couple of bottles off of Amazon and uh, $12 for two big bottles like this. So I really, really like this. I have not used Floetrol yet. I'm going to. Lots of people do. So I'm excited to try it out and, and see how it compares to my Liquitex professionals. So now we come down to the third type of pouring medium, believe it or not, the least expensive one, and that is the Elmer's glue. You take 50% of Elmer's glue and 50% of uh, your water and alcohol, and there you go. You've got a pouring medium. And so you can use it exactly the same way. And now I want to move on to the alcohol, the water and alcohol. So let's just say we're taking a cup. All right, we're going to put in let's say, let's say a quarter cup of pouring medium. Now you're gonna to wanna to add, maybe not a quarter cup, but a little bit less of your paint. You wanna stir it and stir it and stir it. And of course I'm gonna be doing this for you, stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. And if you want cells, I don't know if you've ever heard this term before, but cells, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of, Kind of bad cells. <laughs> this was my very first pour that I ever did, and these were my little cells. Uh, they're not. This is not pretty. It's kind of ugly, but it was my first attempt. And so cells can be very, very beautiful and really, really affect uh, a painting. Cells 
are created through silicone. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your cup, put in your pouring medium, 50%, and then your uh, paint, and then drop a couple of, of drops of silicone into that paint and stir it up. And if you need to thin it out, you use water and alcohol. And the reason that you do, you put alcohol in your water is because it helps pop the bubbles in the paint. And I just use wa uh, distilled water, absolutely use distilled water. Do not go to your faucet and use your regular water, use distilled water. And the reason is because you don't want that, uh, that painting after a while to kind of get moldy and things like that. And with the water, just plain water, it will. So this also helps preserve if you use distilled water. And just about five to 10% of alcohol, I put it in a little bottle. You can mix it in a cup, do whatever you need to do. But put that in your cup to uh, thin out the paint a little bit, a little at a time. And that will help pop the bubbles, the alcohol. And so we've got our pouring medium, the silicone that I got at Home Depot. And my husband and I had a hard time finding this, but we went into the, uh, the tool section and we were able to find silicone there. And it's just Home Depot for a few bucks. So that will help give you cells. And then of course, to thin out your paint a little bit, you use your water, distilled water with some alcohol. Now, once you've got the paint on the canvas, you are going to want to try to pop some of those bubbles. A butane torch will help you do that. And it also helps draw out some, some of those cells. So if they're not being automatically creative, a, blow tor a butane torch will help pull those out. But I have a little warning, warning, warning. Uh, uh, uh this will catch on fire. Your paint will catch on fire if you get too close. So please use it with caution and be very careful. Don't get too close to your painting when you're trying to do it. It's, it's the heat that's gonna be drawing out those cells. You can also, oh, let me talk about the butane for this because I had a heck of a time finding the butane. So I finally ended up having to, uh, was talking to my oldest son. I said, I don't know where to get butane for this thing. And he said, mom, I'm uh, go to the cigarette store down the street. So I, I didn't go, I had him go, um, but he got this butane for me at, uh, at a, one of those cigarette stores uh, in a shop, uh, one of those strip malls. And, uh, and then you just sort of, push this in the bottom and it fills up your butane torch. I got this on Amazon. And then you can get a heat gun. A heat gun also helps pop bubbles. And this, the, the advantage to a heat gun is that it doesn't blow very much. It's just heat. And so that's the advantage to having a heat gun. But when I first started, I didn't have any of those things. I just used my hairdryer which is kind of why my hair dryer has a bunch of paint all over it. And uh, but now that I have these, I don't have to use my hair dryer anymore, except, except I found this new way of, of doing uh, pores that we're going to explore. And it involves pushing that with a lot of air. And some people use the, the blow dryer for it. And some people use air compressor, but I'm going to use my blow dryer and we're going to see what happens. So let's see, let me make sure that I've gathered everything. I have not, oh, I cannot stress this enough. This is a very, very messy process. And so keep your paper towels very close to you. And because you're gonna have paint all over your hands, even on the gloves. And so you're gonna wanna grab paper towels and have them easily accessible so that you can then handle your, your picture or handle other things paper towels close by. All right. Don't forget to wear protective clothing, uh, an apron or clothing that you want to get dirty because you will get dirty. So now in the future, this is just part of the first part of the series. I am going to be doing a pour here just for you, just to show you how to mix paint and doing a pour. But 
Continuing on from this, we're going to do lots and lots of different kinds. I mean, I'm telling you, I have found all different kinds of types of pours. Uh, and I've been hearing these all over YouTube. So there's a regular pour. There's a ring pour, a dirty pour, a flip cup, a swipe, a spin pour, a cookie cutter pour, a colander pour, and dipping and balloon dipping, and um, an over the cup pour, and a Dutch technique. We're gonna do all of those. Maybe not all at once, but we are gonna spread it out through some videos, and we're gonna explore all of these things. Some of them I haven't even done, but we're gonna try them out together because that's kind of the point. We're all in this together. We are all artists discovering and moving forward and, and hopefully discovering new things together and helping one another. This is super fun. If you guys have any questions for me, please don't hesitate. Leave them in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Get some feedback from you, really what you wanna see and all of that and how you're enjoying the channel. I hope that this comprehensive look at things that you need and don't need to begin to pour has helped you. Uh, this is something that I wanted to do when I very first started my YouTube channel because I, I was trying to combine all these different YouTube informations and, and I wanted to put them all in one video. I hope it has helped you and I hope you're encouraged today. I'm gonna to show you the pour really quickly and then the next video is gonna be a few different kinds of pours. All right, everyone. So now we're gonna get started with just a basic pour. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take Floetrol and I am going to pour it into my cups. And hopefully you can see this little more than I wanted, but uh, hopefully you can get a good angle there. That's about how much I'm going to use, and I'm going to use the, <laughs> I'm going to use the metallic paint right here. I've got the purple metallic paint. I've got uh, the green metallic that I'm using. And I'm trying out a teal metallic. I'm just trying all the metallics today. And uh, then the, also the bright gold metallic. And so just gonna pour, actually, you know what? I'm gonna pour a little bit of Floetrol out of this, just a little bit. So I don't know if you can see how much that is, but going to then take my paint, drop some paint in, and just kind of eye it and see what you've got. Stir stick. I'm going to stir this up. Now the consistency that you want to get, remember this is supposed to be 50-50, and the consistency that you want to get is Oh man, I'm having a heck of a time with this. This is my first time doing this. I have to get used to it. Uh, is sort of like a creamy uh, buttermilk. This is pretty good. And so you have to mix and mix and mix and mix. Make sure all of that paint is mixed in there well. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add just a squirt of water just to thin it out a little bit. That's it. And then remember, it's got that uh, alcohol in there as well. So I've got distilled water and alcohol. And now I'm going to drop just two drops of my silicone that I talked about in the paint just because I want to see some cells in there. So this is this one and the consistency is looking really good. I like it. I'm going to stir it for just another minute. Now I'm going to do the rest of the colors and then I'll be right back. All right. So I just want to show you this really quickly. This is the white. And if you can see the white, it's really thick. I put about the same amount of paint in that I did with the others. And so what I need to do here is 
add just a little more Floetrol and then some water. And see if I can get that to thin out a little bit more to make it more like the consistency that we need, which is kind of a creamy buttermilk, kind of a runny buttermilk. Well, see, it's still, that's really thick. So we want to thin that out again. There's enough Floetrol in there, I believe. So I'm going to add more water. Thinned out a little bit more. Almost there. All right. I think that should be it. I'm just going to add a little more. And I'm going to add a couple of drops of silicone in it, too. We are actually going to be talking also about the difference between pouring and epoxy pouring. I'll be doing epoxy pouring soon as well, but um, the great thing about this kind of pouring is that you can leave the paint sitting and they won't harden on you. You don't have to work very fast. So here we go. I'm going to start with uh, just, this is just a regular pour. Nothing fancy. I'm going to start with by pouring some white around the edges here. Maybe a little across here. Everything has been mixed now. Do my metallic here. And here I'm just doing a little design. Right. And the goal didn't turn out the way that I had wanted it to really, but I'm kind of hoping that once everything combines, it'll look good. I guess it doesn't look too bad. Right. A little bit over here. A couple spots over here. Okay, so it's all there, and now we just kind of go through the process of tipping. Now, I've got it put, put you can see right here, actually, there's cups, and I want to make sure that this is even, otherwise this paint would already be running off and uneven. So now we just, and I, of course I'm not wearing gloves. Ah! <laughs> I just told you how important it is to wear gloves and I'm not wearing gloves. You just sort of pour over the edges and it's good to kind of come back to the center and then if there's a design that you want to keep. I don't see a whole lot of cells coming up, which I'm kind of disappointed about. I did put silicone in there. See, I like that kind of flower thing going on in the middle. Maybe I can pour a little more. Let's see, a little more white. And you can do this. You can kind of play with it like this. Things might be a little thin too. Also, I want to encourage you to have some fun doing things like this, using a stir stick. Run your stir stick through it. Have some fun. This is your way, your experimentation, your uh, relaxation. And so learn to enjoy it. And what happens, happens. And eventually you'll get better and better and better at this. and. And just like me, I'm trying to get better and better at, at pouring. It's not my first 
choice as far as uh, art or it's not what I sell or anything like that, but well, I like what's happening there. So what I'm going to do now is actually add just a little speck of green inside this little flower thing here. And you see my hands? <laughs> see how messy they get? Add a little speck of white and see what I can do with that. Maybe a little more blue. Just have some fun, you guys. That's the, that's the great thing about this is that pouring takes a lot of preparation. But in the end, you have a lot of fun with whatever you've got going. Look at that. Woohoo! That's pretty awesome. I'm enjoying it anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my butane torch. And I'm going to see if I can get some of those cells because I don't think I used enough. Oops, wrong way. Hopefully I can get some cells to pop up. I don't think I used enough. Um... Of the silicone. I think my butane's running out. Oh, right in the middle of the video. Well, oh, see, you see some cells popping up here. Let me actually just use my blow dryer. Well, not as many cells as I wanted, everybody, but uh, we have some here and just some a few little ones going on down there. That's kind of cool down there. This is just a basic pour where you're just kind of having fun and you're pouring things all around. And in the next several videos, we're going to be covering all of the rest. All right. So basic pour and you have what you need. I used my Floetrol. I used my water and alcohol. And I used my silicone. And it, at 50 to 50 with the paints and the flow trawl. And then I thinned it down with the water and alcohol and then added some silicone, which obviously not enough to get as many as, as I wanted, uh, the cells. But I also hit it with my butane torch, which ran out of butane right in the middle. And instead, I just went ahead and used my blow dryer. So you can see even now that this is still changing and it will continue to change. Then I'll be able to varnish over the top because this will dry, it won't dry glossy, but I will be able to put a varnish over the top of this. So super fun. And I will see you guys next week when we do a few more different types of pours. And I'm really excited about this. Hope you had fun. Bye.